Rub up your engines! We got a 2010 Honda Cruster. The guy bought it used, and now he's got 182,000. It's still running fine, and he's in his mid 70s, and he's wondering what's going to go first, him or the car. And it's kind of a toss up. He seems in decent shape, but the car seems in decent shape too. So, what I'm going to do today is I'll go through all the checks of what you would do if you were buying a used car so he can see is there anything that's going to go wrong and will the car outlast him? Well, the Cross Store, they didn't make them but nine years. They're nice looking cars. There's nothing wrong with them. They don't make them because it was kind of an in between car SUV that just didn't make it in terms of how much money it cost and what you got. You can say it even says Accord Cross Tour. I personally think they look a lot better than the Accords, but for some reason, they decided to stop making them. And of course, I know the real reason, because they want to make giant SUVs out of everything, where they make a higher profit margin. They didn't make that many of these. They didn't sell that many of these. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. They're good systems. He's never had a problem with it. He changes the oil every 5,000 miles, the transmission every 60, the transfer case every 30. And as you're going to see under the hood, it's a really dependable Honda, 3.5 liter variable valve, V6 engine that can run forever. And you can see, look, it's dirty here. Well, he doesn't care. It's not leaking to the ground. Yes, you get a little seepage. It doesn't hurt anything at all. The downside with this engine is it does have a rubber timing belt. And you want to change that about every 100,000 miles. Now, nobody knows why, but everyone else in the world went to timing chains on their engines. Honda kept the belts on for way too long, which is really weird because they changed to timing chains on their four-cylinder engines, but most of their V6s, they left timing belts on. I don't know, I guess they just didn't want to switch it over. Who knows? They work fine, but you do have to change the belts about every 100,000 miles. You don't want the engine to blow, because it is an interference engine. If the timing belts break, pistons will hit the valves, it'll cost you a fortune. But he's had no such problems with it. He's changed his at 100,000 miles. He takes care of it. You take care of a Honda, believe me, it'll take care of you. You can polish the headlamps if you want them shiny again, or go aftermarket like I did. And even though this thing's living in Massachusetts, look, oh, the LI wheels are still in pretty good shape. And when we look under, it's got superficial rust, of course, but the thing still is in pretty good shape. Honda knows how to rust proof these vehicles. They're not going to rot away like a Chrysler or a Ford. They have good undercoating. They're made correctly. You're going to see rusty pipes. That's just what happens. And if you look here, that's still the original muffler. They want to Americanize it because it says four-wheel drive. Technically, it's all-wheel drive. You can't turn one off or the other like in a truck where you can go two-wheel high or four-wheel high, two-wheel low, four-wheel low. It's an automatic system. It drives all four wheels. That's all that matters. Who cares about political correctness? Now, you can see this is a phone, right? It's a black view. It's a good phone. I use it for analyzing cars. This is called AnyScan. 30M. It's made by X Tools, you can see. And if you've been watching my stuff, I got an X Tool D8, right? This does almost exactly what that does. Only instead of $790, this little kit is $216. Now, granted, it doesn't do immobilizer keys. You can't use it to make a key in your car. Most people aren't going to do that. But this thing does just about anything that the other one does. It's insane what this thing does for $216. And unlike some of the stuff I showed you, like the one I showed you on Japanese cars, it was phenomenal too, but it only worked on Japanese cars. This works on all the cars. So we're going to check this thing out. Key turned on with the engine not running, the battery lights on, and we'll do auto scan. It knows it's a 2010 cross door, 16 pin connector, and we'll do an automatic scan. And here we go, just like the big boys, it's scanning an awful lot of things. All you need is a phone. I like Androids. You can see it's going through 48 different systems. This little thing is going through 48 systems. Now this X tool dongle tool works quite well, but you notice it is slower than the $800 one because instead of having a giant processor, you're just using your phone. This is a black view. It's an okay phone. You know, I use it for analyzing cars. It's not a phone phone. I don't even have a chip in it for using it for making calls because I only use it to analyze car products. Give it a few minutes. We're now on number 16 out of 48. 
and it's probably going to take about eight minutes to do the whole system so while we're going through that you can see he stuck his phone up here for navigation but it did come with sat nav of course it's an older car so it's got yes a compact this cd changer but it's got everything you normally want to need the modes the heating air conditioning now it's got some steering wheel basics too so you can run a bunch of the stuff off the steering wheel these were sort of a luxurious car in their time you know it is 12 years old now but it still rides quite well and being a luxury car it's got some wood grain but the only problem he's got is the driver's door car is kind of coming apart here that was made a little bit cheap and it's got a decent sunroof if you like sunroofs lots of room in the back seat and a cute little trunk there in the back. I have to say the seats are incredibly comfortable. Even though they're 12 years old. Well, we're getting there. We're now on 47 to 48. Now we're done. Go through everything. Normal, normal, normal. There's a failure on the BCM. The anti-lock brakes. So it's all minor stuff. We'll see what it is. The engine's okay. We'll see what the failure of the ABS is. Malfunction of the power tank control module for the ABS. Could be a wiring problem with circuit. You don't expect ABS systems to work that good on a car that's 12 years old anyways. And that could be as simple as the battery replaced. We'll erase that code. We'll see if anything will happen later. We'll clear it. And if it doesn't come back, it was just a power failure. Now we'll see something's wrong with the airbag system. We'll diagnose that. And it says passenger airbag cutoff indicator is shorted. Again, that could easily be an electrical problem. But if it does come back, you don't expect airbags to work that well in a 12-year-old car. Buckle up with your seatbelt. But we'll erase it for now. The code is the BCM. It has one code. We'll see what that is. You can see if you use a phone, it's going to be a little slower than a separate computer. But it still works perfectly fine. And yet, it's another electronic supposed failure. We're going to just clear them all. And if they don't come back, could have been the battery was changed. Could have been a minor flaw. All minor things, actually. It has nothing to do with the transmission or engine. And as you can see now, that's all cleared. So let's look at the engine data and you can see this little tiny device may only be 219 dollars but it does 174 points of data 174 they're checking the data you can see it pops up pretty fast it's not that slow it's an awful lot of information look at it all it is insane now we're going to kind of look at fuel trim see how it's running the information on the variable valve timing oil pressure on the rocker arm it's amazing. It's a six cylinder. There's the misfire, zero, 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 not misfiring at all. And we can see the air fuel ratio is working perfectly fine. 1.00, that's perfect. Every once in a while it goes 1.01, 1 .01, so it's, you know, one one hundredth of a percent off. But that's Honda's for you. They're excellent, well made cars, can last a long time. Now, the guy does maintain it, changes the oil every five, changes the tranny every 60. This is four wheel drive system, all wheel drive, but they call it four wheel drive. He changes differential fluid every 30,000 miles. He's taking care of this car. He bought it used with 40,000 miles on it. And now it's got 182,000 miles. He definitely got his money's worth. Considering that he's around 75 and he's had one lung removed from cancer already, I'm kind of guessing this car may outlast him. He definitely doesn't need to buy another one. And I do have to say so far, this AnyScan A30M is amazing. I gotta say, these guys at X-Tools make some pretty good stuff. Hey, this is $219. The D8 that I have, it's like 700 something dollars. This does pretty much almost the same stuff, except like I say, it doesn't make keys. But how often are you making keys? Are you a locksmith? Probably not. So, if you're looking to buy a Honda Cross Store, don't be put off by the fact that they don't make them anymore. There's nothing wrong with them. They were just the wrong price point for Honda. They went more to full SUVs than something that's kind of part sedan, part small SUV. There's nothing wrong with these cars. They're fun to drive. They can last a long time. If you live in the snow belts, hey, the all-wheel drive system works quite well. You're really not going to get stuck if you put decent tires on them. So, now you know the truth about them. They may not make them anymore, but it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Why do you hear me talk about lacquer quality in Nissans? Well, guess what? Everybody else is figuring it out now, too. 739,000 Nissan Rogues have been recalled. That's their biggest seller in the United States. The wiring on a driver's side door, water can get in, short it out. Now, this is 2014 to 2016 Nissan Rogue. So, if you own one, you want to look it up. And the funny thing is, they don't even have a fix yet. Here's Nissan's suggestion to people who own one. If you smell a burning odor or see smoke, we advise you to park your vehicle outside and call Nissan Roadside Assistance while a fix is being developed. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call them? Hey, can you help me? Well, you know, uh, we'll tow you to the dealer, but nobody, we don't know how to fix them yet, so. <laughs>
<laughs> that company is too much. I don't understand how anybody can buy the garbage that those guys make. It's just relatively unbelievable. There's all of them out there. They're recalling them, but they really don't know how to fix them yet. So I don't know how that goes. It's got a double speak here, but nothing surprises me with Nissan. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.